All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the police are ready to come get us because we are about to start the Wizarding World Exhibition Tournament. This would be round two in the tournament. And uh, I am uh, Dr. Spitchemin or Dr. Spaceman, however you want to say it. Alan Shepard here to host with you. And uh, right above me, I've got uh, Kevin. Kevin, how are you feeling today? I am I am feeling good right now. This, this is going to be one entertaining match. This should be very entertaining here. And uh, we have our uh, competitors. Yes. Um, squibs, muggles, whatever you want to call them. No, no, we wouldn't put you with those terms. Definitely um, some wizards here. Uh, we've got uh, first, just because I'm looking at them right there, would be the not headless at all, Nick Tuig. How are you doing, sir? Doing well. I have a head, hence the name. Uh, not at all a Harry Potter reference. Um, but I'm excited. It's going to be a good time. All right, and then uh, um, Mr. Spaniard, right over there, chewing on his finger. Looks like he's trying to get a little uh, dinner off of there. Uh, how you doing, sir? I'm good. This is like pretty early for me because my my as my name says I'm Spanish, so. But this is not going to be an excuse. My brain works fine. I love Harry Potter, and I have always wanted to face these two. So let's do it. Nice. And then, of course, uh, last but certainly not least, the one everyone knows. Brother Malcolm, how are you feeling? I'm feeling really confident. I um, eat, sl sleep, and breathe Harry Potter. Um, that, and I mean, um, Reuben decided to run away like a little bit. She was scared of all of us. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really. That's what Reuben does. That's what Reuben does. <laughs> And, uh, of course, uh, not failing to give us uh, the heat that we wanted. Uh, well done, sir. All right. So we will be doing uh, The Wizarding World. Yes, uh, including the Harry Potter films and those other two movies. Um, uh, there will be everything Harry Potter um, and The Wizarding World therein. And we will be doing our battle henceforth, of course. Round one will be our standard whiteboard round. You've got five seconds. Mr. Kevin, will you be so generous as to give the 15 seconds to do us our countdown, sir? Sure. All right. He will be our time master, and uh, we'll both be keeping score just to make sure everything is on the up and up. All right. So if you need a repeat, make sure to ask it. If it's a technical repeat, let us know the difference, and we'll trust you guys won't uh, pull any shenanigans. No challenge, right? Um, if you have, I do believe you have one challenge. Yes. You do have one challenge. Alright. So, if we are ready for round one, here we go. Question number one. In the scores and soundtracks, what is the most Wizarding World films composed by one person? You're just looking for the numbers, right? Five, four, yep. three, two, one. All right, pens Time. down, gentlemen. Okay, we'll start with the not headless one at all. Uh, three, there's John Williams. Three, all right, and then Mr. Spaniard. Three, John Williams, his interest, and John Williams. Excellent, and Mr. Malcolm. The competitor has got the uh, correct answer. The number was three for question number one. Move on to question number two, which would be in creatures and monsters. What kind of creature is Hagrid's pet Aragog or Aragog? See scribbling, lots of scribbling. Four, three, two, one, time's up. All right, and we will jump Mr. Spaniard, you first. Acromantula or a spider? Big spider. 
<laughs> a big ass spider. Excellent. All right, Mr. Malcolm. Spider. Spider and the almost headless one. Acromantic. Nice. Very good. Very good. All right. All with the technicals. Well, almost. All right. <laughs> I think big ass is the technical term. So that was the correct answer. Last one. <laughs> All right. Question number three. In the Harry Potter. Who does the real Harry travel with on the way to the burrow in Deathly Hollows Part One? And I see no more scribbling on a so up. Got four, a little bit of scribbling there. Three, two, one, time. All right. And your answer, please, Mr. Malcolm. It was Hagrid and Hedrig. Very good. All right. <laughs> Hagrid and Nick. I almost want to challenge because that's not true. It's just it's Ruby's Hagrid. <laughs> but that's all right. I will leave it. <laughs> we'll, cut, we'll cut the parentheses. <laughs> all right. And Mr. Spaniard. Well, uh, actually, in the books, Hagrid goes with him in the gate. <laughs> <laughs> I would expect nothing less from these three. <laughs> I would expect nothing less. All right. Now, move on to question number four. In Fantastic Beasts, where does Jacob Kowalski work at the beginning of Fantastic Beasts and where to find them? Four, three, two, one, and time. And pens are down, and we'll start with Nick. Mortendale Canning Factory. All right, and Mr. Spaniard. Canning Factory. Canning Factory, and Malcolm. Yeah, I completely forgot he was at a um, factory. I thought he was always at a bakery at the start, but yeah. All right. As long as you didn't say they canned Hedwig, you're all right. Okay. <laughs> I had to. Sorry, Nick. I had to. I, I saw the look on your face. All right. <laughs> okay. So question number five. In the books, in the Goblet of Fire, who provides Harry with the gillyweed he uses for the second task? You know the Goblet of Fire? Um, can you repeat it, please? You cut, you cut out for me. I cut out? All right. Yeah. We'll get a technical then. In the Goblet of Fire, who provides Harry with the gillyweed he uses for the second task? You know the Goblet of Fire is probably my, my least favorite of the Harry Potter films. It's just one I always really? forget about. Yeah. Interesting. My least favorite is uh, Half-Blood Prince. It's also my least favorite book. Wow. And time. Mine's gone. Mine's gone. All right. All right. Time and pins are up, I see. Okay, so let's go. Uh, let's start with the Spaniard. Dobby. Dobby, all right. And Malcolm. Dobby. And Nick. Yeah, I don't read. I was just hoping it was the same. Never. Ah, all right. It's okay. I won't make a Hilton Phonics joke. I just won't because it's you, buddy. Thank you. All right. <laughs> You're welcome. <clears throat> all right. Question number six. In, I guess, the category of Gilroy Lockhart. What creature does Gilroy release into the room? <laughs> during his first defense against the dark arts class. In five, four, three, two, one, time. All right, the pens are down. And we're going to start with uh, Nick this time. Or no, Malcolm this time. 
Now we'll start with Nick. <laughs> I forgot my order. Cornish Pixies. All right, and Mr. Spaniard. Freshly caught Cornish Pixies. <laughs> That was my All time. right. And Malcolm. Cornish Pigs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice little variations on the uh, on the answer. I enjoyed that quite a bit. All right. And now question number seven. In the category of cursed child. Yikes. <laughs> if you saw match one, you'd know. All right. <laughs> A cursed <laughs> child. What store does Ron Weasley own in The Cursed Child? Ah, actually, I'm going to I'm going to correct that. I'm going to correct that. OK. Yeah. So what kind of store does Ron Weasley own in The Cursed Child? What kind to, of store? I don't want to erase it, so I will put my answer in the top. Gotcha. Save that pin. In five, four, three, two, one. All right, we'll start with the uh, pen saver, Mr. Spaniard. A joke shop, Weasley Wizard Weasies. All right, and Malcolm? Joke shop. Yeah. All right, and Nick. I was gonna say joke, but like his brothers did the joke thing, and I figured he likes to eat, so I said candy. And also, I ah, he works, he works for that. He works for uh, George, I think. Yes. All but right, he, but a candy shop is is something that I would like to own. Yep. You would like to own a candy shop? Yes. Yeah. Candy shop. That would be awesome. That would. But then that song would be stuck in my head all day, and I just couldn't do that anymore. I, I, it wouldn't work for me. I missed how many questions are in this one? Uh, there will be ten. Okay. Ten. Ten. All right. Now we are on number eight of ten. Ten. All right, and this would be the category of Newt Scamander. What is Newt Scamander's older brother's name? In five, four, three, two, one. All right, the pens are down. We're going to start with Malcolm. I'm hoping it didn't need full name, but it's Theseus. All right, and Nick? Theseus, Commander. And Mr. Spaniard? Theseus. Theseus. By the All way, right. Name, by the way, my name is David in case you want to use it sometime. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I could, but I, why? This is more fun. <laughs> I mean, it could have been worse. I was going to call you D, but I don't know if we want. <laughs> Nick, you've missed me a lot. I Admit. Have, buddy. All I right. Have. All right. All right. We're in question number nine. Question number nine. The original films, category of the original films. Okay. Which, which of the original films ends on a freeze frame of Harry screaming in delight? You okay if we just do like the subtitle? Uh, yes, just do the subtitle, be fine. Yeah. We have to save the pens. Damn right. In five, <laughs> four, three, two. One. All right, pens down. We're going to start with Nick. Prisoner of Azkaban. All right. I... Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Prisoner of Azkaban. Prisoner of Azkaban. <laughs> and Malcolm. Prisoner of Azkaban. Prisoner of Azkaban is correct. All right. Okay. 
Oh, there was a nice dinging sound somewhere. All right, question number 10. Question number 10, our final question. Mm -hmm. Falls under the category of teachers and headmasters. In The Order of the Phoenix book, who takes over as divination teacher after Professor Trelawney is fired by Umbridge? Five, four, three, two, one. All right, pens are down. And we're going to start with a man of many names, but I'll only use one. <laughs> Mr. Spaniard. <laughs> Friends. All right. And Malcolm. Oh, no. Did he freeze again? <laughs> oh, no. I think Malcolm. Oh, there he is. Fabian. He's here. All right. Friends like the centaur takes over for. I said bins because I don't read. I have a tablet. Because <laughs> he doesn't read. <laughs> All right. All right. So that's final question in round number one. Question. Do we, you, do, you guys don't do bonus questions for the first round? Actually, we do. Okay. And we have one person that gets a bonus question. Uh, yeah. Can we guess who that is? <laughs> <laughs> that would be you, sir. That would be you, sir. I mean, I know, I, I know. Can I, use an extra point. You can use extra point. <laughs> if I get it. Well, what, let's see if you get it. Let's see if you get it. All right. So this will be only for you. All right. <clears throat> okay. And no category for this. In the Chamber of Secrets, what full message is written on the wall next to the petrified Mrs. Norris? <sighs> the full one. The full message. Hmm. This is going to be a, one of those translation things. Okay. Five, four, three, uh, two, repeat one. Repeat the question. All right. In the Chamber of Secrets, what full message is written on the wall next to the petrified Mrs. Norris? Okay, let's go for it. The Chamber of Secrets has the Chamber of Secrets has been opened. Enemies of the air beware. And that is correct for an extra point. <laughs> and Nick wrote a bunch of stuff down. <laughs> Probably the same thing I said. <laughs> Pretty much the same thing you said. Oof. All right. So at the end of round number one, and Kevin, make sure I've uh, hopefully you've been keeping along, keeping score along with me. Make sure I got this right. I've got our beloved Spaniard in the lead at 11 points, Nick at 8 points, and Malcolm at 9. Correct. All right. Excellent. Okay, good job, gentlemen. All right, now... Subrath is setting up our magical wheel. All right, if we can all see the wheel. We want to read the categories on the wheel. And I'm reading them the way I have them because I can't see them on there. We've got Newt Scamander. Cursed Child, Original Series, Fantastic Beasts, Gilroy Lockhart, Harry Potter, Teachers and Headmasters, Creatures and Monsters, and Books. All 
All right. So we're going to let uh, you, sir, in the lead. Would you like to uh, spin or are we going to defer it? I'm going to defer. Defer. That would be going to Malcolm then. Malcolm, would you like to spin or defer? Go on, Nick. You can spin it. <laughs> I to go first. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Nick, go ahead and give us a spin here. And... Oh, heroes! Oh, just right. I forgot. Heroes and villains is on the uh, wheel as well, which will be our opponents and. Uh, oh, okay. Spinner's choice. Okay, okay, okay. I believe. I'll take that. Original films. Yeah. Nick is gonna take this. You books, no plays. <laughs> I just watch movies. <laughs> All right. Now there will be uh, stealing. Available, so Kevin, if you could really be on the uh, keeping score here for sure. me, and let me find. Does original like original films? That, that means all the films, right? <laughs> That's how I understand it. <laughs> that would be original. All the films, okay. yeah, all the original films, not counting the two other ones. Oh, oh, oh that's even better. Okay, great. <laughs> all Harry Potter. Got it. All right, that makes sense. Harry Potter all the time. Oh, hold on. All right. <clears throat> so question number one. Where was the entrance to the Chamber of Secrets located? Um, I mean, it's in a girl's bathroom. It's like the sink, the round sink thing in a girl's bathroom. For two points. Good work. All right, question number two. In the Sorcerer's Stone, what chess move did Ron make, sacrificing himself to the opposition's king in order to allow Harry to move forward? Oh, like you want like the square number he went to? The chess move, yes. Now we're getting Five. H3. And a big two Nine point one. pull right there. Nine one. Wow. Oof. As the question answer, I probably shouldn't commentate, but that was <laughs> impressive. <laughs> All right. Question number three What was the name of the truth serum used on Cho Chang? that led to the discovery of the Room of Requirement in the Order of the Phoenix. There it is here. And yes, two points. All right, question number four, your ultimate question in this round. Who directed Goblet of Fire? Oh God, Mike Newell. <laughs> <laughs> it almost led to a choking <laughs> hazard, but yes, you are correct. <laughs> All right. All right. So if we can bring uh, the wheel back up. With the perfect uh, with Levy the perfect score, saw. With Sorry, go ahead. Score for, uh, number score, he has a total of 16 points. Sweet. There we go. All right, and we're going to, uh, um, uh, the Spaniard, would you like to spin or defer? <laughs> Malcolm, go. You're going to go? No, Malcolm. Or Malcolm, go. Yeah, oh, Malcolm. Malcolm, you go. <laughs> well, Mally, turn, turn, turn. Tell us. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good spin, brother. Oh, you get a free one. <laughs> what, you didn't do enough questions in the original film? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what do you feel about Fantastic Beats? Um, fuck it, I'll, I'll spin against a try my luck. Alright. Probably going to regret this. Creatures and monsters. 
Okay. Okay. All right. Feeling he's feeling confident. He's feeling confident. Okay. In creatures and monsters. Your first question, sir. What is the name of the creature that made Neville pass out during herbology class in the Chamber of Secrets? Um, Mandrakes. For two points. So people will get this or Mandragora. Ah. People will get this. <laughs> people will get it. God, I can hear the I can hear them. <laughs> All right, question number two. What, uh, what is the name of the lion-like creature in Crimes of Grindelwald? Oh, shit, what was it called? I'm going to have to go to multiples. I'll know it when I hear it. All right. All right, your multiple choice options are a bow truckle b doxy c zowu d niffler it's a zowu and you're correct for one point and lots of erasing going on pens being demolished dreams right. have, been, have been shattered <laughs> dreams shattered all right, question number three. What type of anacrid? <laughs> I think I said that wrong. What type of arachnid? There you go. What, what type of arachnid did Mad-Eye Moody perform the three unforgivable curses on? I'm either really overthinking it, um, but I'm going to go model choice just in case it's too really specific. Thanks for this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Your four multiple choice options are A, a black widow, B, an ambleful pig, pygy, pygy? Amble Pygy, in parentheses, a wisp spider slash tailless wisp scorpion, C, a tarantula, or D, a megalomorphi. <laughs> I'm thinking it's four, three, B. Two. And you're correct. <laughs> Thank you for not making me say those again. I appreciate it. I was Good considering Lord. it. <laughs> I bet you were. <laughs> All right. Uh, your last question in this round. Question number four. What is the name of the house elf that serves Sirius Black? This creature. And that is right for two points. Malcolm, you have a total of 15 points. All right. All right. And you're going to give the wheel a spin there, sir. Yep. There we go. That was an abrupt stop. Oh, no. It's still going. Is our wheel spinning? Or it's freezing? Ooh, cursed child. Yeah, nope. <laughs> That's a big nope. Seems to be the uh, the choice du jour there. I mean, I would probably spin it again. It happened to me <laughs> in my last Harry Potter match. Oh, oh no. Oh, looks like we've got the books. Okay. The books. Well, I'm not hoping Nick steals a lot. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if it was Chris Child, you probably wouldn't get a lot of steals. Uh, well, yeah. <clears throat> All right. In your category of books, 
in the third book, how do Cirrus and Lupin stop the Whomping Willow from beating them up in order to enter passage to the Shrieking Shack? Okay. So, do you need, like, the thing they have to do, or how they do it? Uh, give me both. <laughs> or... Okay. So, they have to they have to squeeze, like, a certain specific part of, of the Whomping Willow. And Lupin does it by levitating, like, a, a raft or something. It's, I don't know. Well, yeah, levita he levitates a rock or an object, and he squeezes the or touches a specific part of the Whomping Willow. I'm gonna say that is incorrect. That is incorrect. All right. So for the... Do we get a repeat of the question since it was so long ago? Yes, you'll get a repeat of the question. In the third book, how do Sirius and Lupin stop the Whomping Willow from beating them up in order to enter the passage to the Shrieking Shack. Oh. Five, like, four, three, two, one. All right, so Nick, what do you got? Uh, Immobilis, what they do in the, book, in the movie, I doubt that's, that's the same. That is incorrect. Malcolm? Um, doesn't Crookshanks press a knot on the tree? Yes, he presses a knot on the trunk. Uh, I am going to challenge that. Yeah. Because he only presses the knot for Sirius and you asked for Sirius and Lupin. And I said they had to touch a specific part of the one pin willow. I just didn't you say, did say You did say squeeze a specific part of the trunk. Or the yeah, tree. I mean, because I, mean, Lupin, I, 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 mean, I was getting yeah. there because Lupin and Sirius do, do it in a different way because for Sirius is crocsets and Lupin levitates up. Levitates the stone. How do you think? Yeah. No, it's not the stone. It's like the. I don't know. I'm Spanish. No, so, no, okay. A raft. Is this a raft the thing? That, root? Root? No, it's not a root. It's like a little. Branch. Tree. Yeah, branch. A little the branch in the, the floor. Yeah. So I'm going to challenge that for the world. Yeah. You did say squeezing, which could be hitting the trunk on the tree. You did say part of the tree. So I, I, I also said the squeeze and touch. Yeah. I just both words. Well, I mean, both yeah. Words. I, mean, I, I mean, just to be fair, I, I would argue that um, David gets the point because, I mean, like, he did, yeah. like, pressing a certain part of the tree, not of the tree. It is essentially the same thing. Yeah. It is the same thing. I was uh, the reason I didn't give it the first time was the also lifting, the levitating of the branch because it was there was the two different ways used, and it did oh, ask specifically yeah, yeah. for those no, no, two. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, yeah. So we'll go ahead and get the two points to uh, to David. Cool. Sorry, Malcolm. <laughs> hey, I mean, um, I, I helped David get the points in the end because I probably I actually you did. Look at you doing the same thing. <laughs> so, being a nice guy, being a nice guy. Thanks, man. All right. Question number two. All right. In the third task of the Goblet of Fire, what creature makes Harry solve a riddle as it is guarded the closest path to the Triwizard Cup? A Sphinx. For two points. For those curious, I guessed Minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is a type of Arachnid. <laughs> arachnid. <laughs> That's right, Arachnid. <laughs> If I'd have said it like that, I would have said it correctly. <laughs> All right. Question number three. <clears throat> what is Kingsley's code name in the Potter Watch radio program? <sighs> multiple choice. All right. Your multiple choice options are A. Rapier. B. Royal, C. Regal, D. River. Can you repeat those options again, please? I can. A. Rapier, B. Royal, C. Regal, 
the river. I'm going to say river. That is incorrect. Malcolm, since you were so chivalrous before, we'll go to you first for a chance to steal. Royal. Royal and Nick. Damn, I guessed rapier, but judging by your head nod, I'm guessing it was... It was Royal. Malcolm gets the steal. Malcolm gets the steal. All right. Question number four, your final question. Which was the only book Voldemort did not appear in? Uh, <clears throat> my, I, if I am correct, it's my favorite book. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. That is correct for two points. All right. So, Kevin, you've been keeping score, yes? Yes. All right. So how many points does David have at the end of that round? Okay, David is still ahead with 17 points. But Nick and Malcolm are tied with 16 points. This could be anyone's game still. Anyone's game still. We're still in here. All right. So for our third round, we're going to get some numbers from the competitors. Numbers one through nine. One. Oh. Through nine, you get uh, three numbers between one to nine. And uh, Kelvin, Kevin, help me out writing these down because there's not a lot of numbers and three guys. All right. <laughs> so we'll go with uh, we've got two ties and a leader. <clears throat> we'll go with uh, David with your three numbers. Three, two, and seven. Same three, again. Three, two, and seven. Three, two, three, and seven. Three, two, seven. Um, and Malcolm. Um, four, one, and six. Four, one, and six. <sighs> well, my chance and to say 69, but I'll just take them in <laughs> chronological order of whatever's left. The chronological. <laughs> highest of whatever's left. So five, eight, and nine. Five, eight, and nine. All right. So we've got Nick and Malcolm tied. So who should go first? Probably flip a, flip, flip a coin or something. We could flip a coin. <laughs> I have a coin right here. There. No, Heads. Didn't flip. <laughs> you didn't say anything. I did it all. <laughs> I was excited to flip the coin. Heads. All right. So I guess who's gonna call it? I guess off head. <laughs> I think. Heads. And we've got heads. <laughs> Malcolm can go first. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we got to leave that in. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Actually, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right. So, Malcolm's going first, and you picked four. Category four. For two points, this would be Fantastic Beasts. What is the name of the goblin character voiced by Ron Perlman? In five, four, is it three? Ronald? That is incorrect. The answer was Narlac. Ah, of course it is. 
Great. Narlac. All right. So should we stay with Malcolm for his three? Um, I, I figured I'll, I'll, yeah, alternate between me and Nick. Because we, All right. We both got so we're going to Nick? Yeah. Nick, your two-pointer in category five. You pick the number five. The category will be so scores and soundtracks. Great. So your two-point question is, who composed the iconic Harry Potter theme? Not John Williams. Are you saying not John Williams? Is it, is it not John Williams? John Williams is my answer. Okay, great. Correct for two points. Thank you. <laughs> All right. No. Okay. No, no, to Malcolm, I think. Yep. Yeah. We're going back to Malcolm. And you pick the number one. The number one, the category for your three pointer is the category of books. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. All right. <clears throat> All right. For three points. In The Prisoner of Azkaban, what happened to Harry's Nimbus 2000 broomstick after falling off of it when the Dementors invaded the Quidditch match? It hit the Whomping Willow and was literally shattered. That is correct for three points. Now you ask a thing that's the same thing as the movie. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Was it personal, Nick? Was it personal? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that gives us... We're going back to Nick for his three-pointer, yes? No. 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 We're finally going to David. Yes. <clears throat> for your two-pointer, sir, you picked the number three. The category of teachers and headmasters. For two points, who was the head of the Hogwarts Hospital Wing? Uh, Madame Pomfrey. For two points. I always thought Poppy was like a nickname. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what's her name? <laughs> I believe it is Poppy Pomfrey. <laughs> All right. So that gives you... Okay, so now we're going to jump to Nick. Yes. For your yes. three-pointer, you pick the number eight. And... God, don't laugh. God. <laughs> I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with everyone else. Be prepared. Three points in the category of the cursed child. <laughs> <laughs> I took one of those like ten question like basic things to know about the cursed child. So let's see if that. <laughs> let's see if this pull up paid off. All right, <clears throat> for three points in the category of the cursed child. Yeah. As a result of Albus and Scorpius's humiliating Cedric in the second task of the Tri Wizard Tournament. What does Cedric do, which ultimately leads to Voldemort winning the Battle of Hogwarts? Well, he lives, but I'm guessing that's not what you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to do one. Eight. Two. Repeat it. One. Repeating the question. As a result of Albus and Scorpius's humiliating Cedric in the second task of the Triwizard Tournament. What does Cedric do which ultimately leads to Voldemort winning the Battle of Hogwarts? I'm guessing. Um, I'm guessing he would have had to do something that allowed Voldemort to live, so I'm going to say he steals Gaunt's ring. That is incorrect. But that was a great guess. You, you that was a great guess. <laughs> I love the conviction you had. 
<laughs> the hand movements were perfect. Um, the correct answer was he kills Neville Longbottom. What the hell, Cedric, dude? That <laughs> <laughs> Over here. And David, good job with the, uh, wasn't worth the steal, but good job pulling that. You know what? I, I, you know what? I'll do a nick here. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent work, sir. All right. So we are going to stick with Nick? Yeah. Yes. Not Sticking with Nick. Nick. So let's go. Five points. The number nine. Mm -hmm. The category is Albus Dumbledore. Okay, I know. <laughs> it's good. It's a good start. <laughs> All right. For five points, mm -hmm. what is Albus Dumbledore, Dumbledore's father's name? Oh. Oh. Okay, I think it's one of three things that I'm thinking, so I'm... Four, three... Repeat it while two. I think about things some more. Right. <laughs> what is Albus Dumbledore's father's name? I think it's one of his three middle names, so I'll just throw it out. Percival. That is correct. Come on. <laughs> nice one. Well, for like, it probably wouldn't be Brian. That's way too. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Just Brian. Just well, Brian. It, well, it, well, it's Albus Dumbledore, not Albus Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> Can we give a point for that? <laughs> Much like I could. I really want to, but no. Like, yeah, we can't quite do that. But all right, good pull. Good pull. So now we are going. Uh, both math is hard. Both, both since uh, Nixon lead with twenty three, Malcolm and David are tied with nineteen. Yes, so we're gonna go. Probably with Malcolm. With, with yeah, Malcolm. Malcolm. Yeah, down to the five pointer now. Malcolm well, with um, his. I've already, I've already got oh, my three. Oh, that's right. He's only got a yeah, two, so it's the David. It. It's David for his three pointer. Yeah. David for his three pointer and for your three pointer, you uh, pulled the number two, and that would be the category of original films. Cool. Original films for your three pointer. <clears throat> Albus Dumbledore is Hogwarts headmaster throughout the majority of the film series. Name two other headmasters mentioned in the original eight films. Armando Tippett and Severus Snape. That is correct. For three points. <clears throat> was McGonagall in there? Just out of curiosity? No, it was Umbridge. Okay. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> well, I, I, in the movies, I don't. I don't think McGonagall's ever oh, right. ever seen okay. as the headmaster. Just only ever acting. At times. Yes, and, acting in, interim, as they say. All right. <clears throat> so now we're going to Malcolm for his five pointer. I need to hit it. And you need to hit it. You the numbers you hit this. You'll be in the lead, and you'll elim eliminate Nick. You pick number six. The category is Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> For five points. In The Half-Blood Prince, Harry wins a bottle of Felix Felis that is good for 12 hours of luck after a potions lesson with Professor Slughorn. What potion did Harry have to brew to win the bottle of liquid luck? It's it's the um, draft of living death. For five points. <laughs> and 
And with that, Nick has been eliminated. <laughs> but not decapitated. <laughs> Alright. All right, come on. Alright. So we're down to David the Spaniard hitting his five points. And he picked the number seven. And if we believe the Pixies, not from the Wizarding World, but from the band, if man is five, the devil is six, then God is seven. Sorry, not to get religious. It's just a pixie song. All right. So, so, category is Rubius Hagrid. Okay. For five points. What's the name of Hagrid's brother? Oh. I was expecting mother. Okay, uh, Grok. <laughs> <laughs> and for five points and the win, you are correct, sir. <laughs> Make sure I tally that all right, correct, Kevin? Uh, okay. <laughs> Good, all right. And your thing. winner. And moving on to the next round. Good work, good pull. How are we feeling? Uh, surprised, shocked, because honestly, when you when you when you said Hagrid, I had it in my head. He, he's going to ask about the, about his mother's name. He's going to ask about his mother's name, and I was doubting between two. I was already thinking about one of about one of the two to answer, <laughs> and then you said brother, and I was like, what? <laughs> I'm feeling great. I'm feeling like. I mean, this match, I knew it was going to go a great match and th three five-pointers, like, and three great pull. I mean, I consider my mine the lowest pull. So props to Nick, props to Malcolm. Obviously, they knew answers I didn't know. I wouldn't have gotten Percival. I wouldn't, and obviously, Malcolm stole one for me. Uh, but I have to say, I love... Harry Potter. I grew up with Harry Potter. In the last Harry Potter match I, I played, I took Robert Parker to the five-pointer. Mm. So, and I felt like it was the time for me to win a Harry Potter match. And now, if I am correct, I Thomas Kelly is in the finals, right? He won the first match? I believe match. so. Mm -hmm. He won the first I mean, I want. I have wanted to play Scully in Harry Potter like forever. I don't know who's going. To, yeah, I don't know who's going to win the next one. But I mean, just Thomas Scully being there is like a rush of adrenaline for me, and I, I know it's going to be a great match. So I'm happy. Nice, excellent, excellent. Well, your uh, love and uh, adoration for the series paid off. Yeah. Paid off big time. So congratulations, good work. Uh, but no slouches in their own right. Let's go to Nick. Nick, how you feeling? I'm doing all right. You know, if you ever want to do a trivia contest that excludes the books and the plays, uh, <laughs> I'll take that all day. Um, but this was fun. I'm still very curious why Cedric Diggory would, would kill Neville over, over losing the tournament. But why God, You know, it makes me look at the guy a little different. Maybe he did. <laughs> yeah, he but it was fun. Good luck in the future, David. Uh, Malcolm, always a pleasure. Uh, everyone for hosting. Thank you for hosting. Good to be here. Excellent. And Malcolm, how you feeling, sir? Um, I feel, feel good. Um, I don't really have anything to complain about. Um, I mean, it's one of those ones I do think David's wife pointer was probably a little bit really easy for a five point. I agree. <laughs> too, but uh, I mean, I mean, um, I mean, I was thrown off with my technical difficulties at the start, so but it was a fun match. And if anything, this is going to be the most entertaining match of the of the round. <laughs> I believe so. I believe so. All right, Kevin. Uh, what? Thank you so much for uh, keeping score, keeping these uh, all these all these numbers these gentlemen were putting up. How you feeling? How do you think uh, the match went? Oh, the match it ended up being great. I I'm not quite surprised. This these are very great competitors, especially with the fine knowledge of Harry Potter. 
Excellent. All right. Well, that's it for this round. Stay tuned for the next round here in the Wizzing World Exhibition Tournament. I've been uh, Dr. Spaceman, Dr. Spaceman, whatever you want to call me, uh, for Kevin and for our uh, three uh, amazing competitors here. Aloha. Take care. Good night, guys. Good night.